You're in sunny Rochdale, although it's not, it's not so sunny at the minute. The idea that we have is around like looking at the benefit system. They have your life in their hands, basically. One wrong move and they can just go. Bit of knowledge of the area, I mean, we know a lot of people in the area, we've got a lot of links, we can get to certain places, can't we? We can figure out what's going on. What do you think of the benefit system? Has it helped you? It has done, but it's also helped to ruin me. I think we need to find people that are actually going through something with the benefit system now. We need to go to them places where the people that are being impacted by this stuff are. Why do you always pick on me first? So look, let's just go, let's talk to them, let's, let's find out. <laughs> Has anyone heard this tune? Has anyone heard this tune? Yeah. Yeah. When you get into the yeah. Most of the time when we hear that tune, it's when we're on hold. And we actually feel like the DWP and the, uh, the system as it's set up right now is putting people's lives on hold. The DWP stands for the Department for Work and Pensions. It causes a lot of misery for people in our community. So I'm Paddy. I work for a project called The Elephant's Trail and we try and use our lived experience of things like addiction, mental health, domestic violence and stuff like that to change the system. I've been through addiction, homelessness. In a matter of fact, I used to beg where I'm stored for money so I could eat, take drugs, get drunk, whatever. I want to change the system because it isn't the system, it's how it's run. We're trying to engage the public, like, you know, we're trying to tell them about some of the stuff that we saw that's wrong with the DWP. We think it's pretty shocking the way that they're treating people. I went to the job centre a few months back. You go in there like hopeful and you come out there depressed. You go, out with more traumas, don't you, then you, actually, you go out with more traumas actually than you're actually going into the building. We've been gathering people's messages and what they want to say to the DWP because we, we want to deliver a message to them. Yay. Expecting people with young children to work all hours with no childcare, being sanctioned if you don't keep a job due to this, is harsh. It's a joke. See what people are saying as well, get their stories, because the more voices that we can gather, the more it adds to it, doesn't it? It's not just people out of work who struggle with the welfare system. How are you doing, Pete? You alright? I went to meet my mate Pete, who was bouncing between benefits and precarious employment. Right, what we're talking about. Have you been struggling to make ends meet, Pete? Uh, yeah, big time. It's just hard. Just hard. I mean, I, I try, but it's just not working. It's just hard at the, at the moment. It's been, a, it's been a tough, tough year. In what way? Just like surviving and. Gas electric, the electric, the gas is going around like the clappers, it's just, <laughs> it's just not good. Yeah. Would you like a brew, Panda? I'd love a brew, Pete, that'd be absolutely amazing, yeah. mate. I'm trying my best to get a job, honestly, I'm trying my best. I've never robbed in my life, but I know a lot of people what are robbing um, yeah. through, through, they can't survive. So it's like, like £5.50 now, they're pulling behind the counter. You are, sorry? They're pulling behind the counter. They're pulling behind the counter. <laughs> yeah, that's how bad it's getting. They just, everyone's sticky butter. My sleeping pattern's knackered. What, because the gas and electric? And no, just like surviving and just... Want to get a job and it's just not happening. What kind of jobs are you looking for? Well, I just want a chance. Uh, I'm good. I'm very confident. I'm not shy. I'm a hard worker. I don't let people down. I always turn up. So I just need someone to give me a chance at something. It was a Saturday, so we went down to a food pantry in the local library for some lunch. As well as cheap dinners, they also run a food bank. This started five, six years ago, and we provide food where we can at cost price, and we build up a community around us, and people are doing things in the community. By chance, we bumped into a familiar face. How come you're in here, sis? Well, I'm struggling, aren't I? Because I'm homeless at the minute. Yeah. I struggle with um, getting food and stuff like that, so this is like brilliant. Oh, nice one, mate. Thanks for starting it No, it's right. lovely. This is a form that we ask people to fill out, and we chose Saturday for the people that work because people who are working are also struggling as well. But with the food banks being during the week, they can't actually make it. My sister had recently had her benefits cut while she was in a psychiatric unit. Is it on? While she was there, 
the DWP had assessed her as having no mental health problems. We're making this film, sis, it's about the DWP, you know, like in sanctions and things like that. You've been going yeah. through a bit with them, haven't you? Terrible time. They'd done my review a year early with no reason and they took me off everything. So I'm on hardly any money at all. It's like I'm a slave to the system and I'm running around trying to get food and pay bills and it's just no good. I'm left with hardly anything to live on. So this, like I said, this has been a godsend. There are pantries like this across our community, trying to support people the system fails. This is Winner, she's raised, it's probably in two grand or more for us. While people at work are using food banks to survive, people like Pete want meaningful employment but can't find it. And vulnerable people like my sister are having their benefits cut when they need them most. I wanted to go and visit a group in Ashton who had a campaign about the injustices in the benefits system. I say it's very discreet, look. <laughs> Anyway, so what we're going to do is experiment with one of these scenes uh, that we're doing to show the system as it currently is. He was going to listen to us. We tried to tell people about our lives and then everyone nods that they agree but nothing ever changes. They were using theatre based on their own experiences to push for systems change. It would help a lot of people with mental health if they could just survive with just a little bit more wealth. This campaign, what we're doing, hopefully we'll get our voice heard and hopefully this summer will change. As well as the campaign, the group were also running boxing classes for people in the community. They invited me along and Nick told me he'd just been sanctioned for his campaigning. Well, what they're saying, you can't be volunteering because you're not actively looking for work. So you've either got to be actively looking for work, yeah, uh, if you want to volunteer, you've got to land in a sick note, yeah? So you don't have to look for work, you can just volunteer. And if you're suffering mental health here and you've been out of work for a bit, it's hard to jump straight into a job. Do you know what I mean? Yeah? Some people volunteer to build themselves back up to get into work. Obviously, when you get sanctioned, yeah, you have £2.68 in your account. <laughs> That's a fortnight when you get sanctioned. Do you know what I mean? £2.68. That's the cost of much of the tin of beans at these days. I don't want my daughter around, but I was around. Do you know what I mean? I grew up around drugs all my life, alcohol all my life. But I just want my daughter to just have a normal life. It degrading me, it's so destroying, man, not me. I'll send seven as fast as you can, come on! Do you think other people have been benefiting from, like, sort of things that have helped you? It's not just the boxing, I do. I've set up my own community centre in Ashton. Yeah, yeah. And I run workshops. It really helps me because we've all got similar stories and we're all in recovery. Big part of my recovery is giving back to the community. I get satisfaction from seeing other people do well. It's heartbreaking, really, because he's talking about the shame and the humiliation of it, you know, for wanting to be a good father, yet feeling like he can't provide. He's actually putting himself in a better position. He's like, he's helping others and he's helping himself. And that kind of stuff should be being celebrated. He shouldn't be being punished for it. You should be trying to encourage it, not discourage it. The whole thing seems counterproductive to me. Back in Berry, I get a call from Pete, who tells me he's got a job. Pete! What are you saying? Um, you've got to work, you've got to work, no matter what it is. So, I don't like working for ages, to be truthful, because they give you one day, two days, and all that, and it's not good. But they told me it's ongoing work, so I'll see. Is it a luxury getting the bus? Yeah, a luxury getting the bus. We'll get this one. Get this one? Yeah. The anti genius. You like this is your anti genius? Yeah. A job's a job, isn't it, Gene? You need to get a job. Can't live on that universal credit any longer. Shocking. Yeah, we'll get off here. There's the gates there. Oh my god. I don't have to go. Alright, go on, mate. Take care. I could see the gratitude on him and how desperate he was to make it work and how he didn't want to get laid off. He's going to have to cycle here every day. You know, like he doesn't have the luxury of getting buses and stuff. I'm still hoping that today goes well and it doesn't knock his confidence and, uh, you know, and that they take good care of him. 
In other positive news, my sister has been given a flat by the council, but she's still fighting to get her benefits back. I've got to post this today. What's it, what's it for? Do you want me to read it you quick, like? Kerry is a 43-year-old female who has a diagnosis of schizoaffective disorder, bipolar affective disorder, and functional neurological disorder. So it's just stating that I have got my conditions. And how do you feel about the fact that we've said that you don't have it? Angry. Angry? Angry, because, and shocked. Because at the end of the day, I've spent 24 years in the system, mostly. Mostly sectioned, even being honest. On and off, sectioned all my life. Yeah. And for them to turn around and say, look, there's nothing wrong with you. It's like saying my whole life's been a lie. It's a nice area, isn't it? Yeah, it's really nice. I've landed with this flight, it's a nice flat. This is the intercom to let people in and out. Oh, right, okay. And the, you know, at the bottom door. Like, it's just finding the money to get it all done. Because I've got nothing, I've got no furniture. So what, does it feel like a fresh start? It's got to be a fresh start and it feels like one, yeah, it does. Well, Key, I've got it. It's nice out here, isn't it? Have you seen the garden? There's a bird feeder there. This story has obviously taken on a personal element for me. It's really difficult to see my sister struggling against a system that is meant to help her. Lately I've been thinking about maybe becoming like a drugs counsellor or something. Yeah? Yeah. What, using that lived experience? Yeah, to help people get off it. Because I think I would be good at that. I know for a fact you'd be good at it, I believe in you. Thank you. When you give people encouragement, not coercion, they have more of a chance to succeed. Soon after, I get a call from Pete, who tells me he's lost his job. Unfortunately, due to low requirement, shift has been cancelled. Please do not attend work today. I've set off, I've made it for work, and they just say, no work. That's it, you're just going home. And they said it the last three days now. You're trying to get on your feet, and it's just knocking you down and off again. You're trying your best, you're getting up for work, and then you just get phone calls like that. I hope you're not feeling too blue, Pete. I'm feeling a bit down. We've seen by making this film that the benefit system is just not doing what it's supposed to. Communities need to be empowered to flourish and this can't happen when they're being penalised. I think it's important that we're telling them stories because we live in the communities, we're seeing it day to day. The system can be intimidating, but we're going to keep making films about the things that most affect our communities. Can you do it again? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. That's a wrap. I think the messages are there for the government. Oh. They're going to be putting people in jail just because they're trying to feed themselves and feed the families. What do you think it is? Any guesses? Going round in circles. It's a revolving door, hey! We should have prizes for that because it, <laughs> it was a bit crude.